members are really thinking a lot about the administrative burdens associated with practice and where can there be efficiencies in the administrative work uh, that enable us to spend more time looking our patient in the eye and talking with them rather than doing a lot of the back office dealings, which, you know, over the past few decades, that sheer paperwork and red tape has increased in the field of medicine. Um, and so how much of that can be taken off the plate of a really well-educated clinician, um, doctor, nurse, you know, whoever it might be, and let them just do what they're meant to do. And so that's an area that a, a lot of our members recognize as important and would like to see more education and more focus and more actionable knowledge. How can I implement this? How will I implement it? How will I pay for it? How do I teach it? That's what people are asking for. They're, they're not asking for theoretics as much as I would like to implement, implement some of this great stuff that seems to be out there. Can you help me figure out how to do it in a way where people will use it and it will be cost effective and it won't hurt and ideally help my patients. Even with back office work, we have to remember that it could touch the patients. We have to look at that and just make sure that we know what the downstream effects are. So that's the first area. The second area where, where we hear a lot of conversation is, I want to understand if I'm working with AI, what happens? Is the AI smarter than me? Am I smarter than it? If it gives advice and I use it, what does that mean? If I don't use it, what does that mean? Um, and right now what we teach is that it is a tool just like any other tool. If you're looking at an ultrasound and interpreting it, that's a tool. If AI is telling you that these are possibilities, that is a tool. And to always use your own clinical acumen um, beyond that and to not use a single tool. Don't only use the AI to tell you what to do. Use all the other things you would have used before AI existed to determine what is your course of action. I don't think AI in the clinical realm, meaning having it make a decision for you for clinical decision support, should be the first place we start at all. Um, we wanna start with having people understand what AI is and how it works. We want to think about the administrative burden because we know that that's a good area for us to start testing in creating systems and understanding the cost, understanding the downstream effects. So I think that's a place where many systems are already going and it's it's the right approach. Um, and then the areas where there is already some level of risk prediction happening, not to categorize people, but rather, especially in rural, urban, global areas, to say sick from not sick, that's really important. And we don't even do that well enough in the world today. Um, partly because there's just so much chronic illness as people get older, partly because there's a workforce shortage across the board, but most certainly in cardiology. So are there ways to use these technologies to help upskill, if you will, community health workers, other people, or give them information they need to say, not here's an exquisite seven step plan as to how I'm going to treat you when I'm not trained to do this, but hey, look closer at this one over here. This person may need to go to a medical center, right? And so I think those are the kinds of areas that our members respond to, which is let's, let's start using it in places where it's going to start making a difference and not at a high executive functioning level, comparing it to the human brain, but we don't need to go there yet. There's so much other work to be done.